Hi, welcome to this third episode in the navigation series. Today we're going to talk about safe args. When you navigate between different destinations in your application, you may want to pass some arguments. Passing arguments is good because it means that you don't have to have some global declared in your application just so that different destinations can have shared access to this thing. It's better for data encapsulation if you just pass the information that that new destination needs. Navigation Component provides a mechanism for doing this using bundles, which is the general Android mechanism for passing information between things like activities. And you could totally use bundles here. On one side, you could stuff the arguments into a bundle, and then on the other side, you could extract the arguments out from the bundle. But Navigation Component provides something better called SafeArgs. SafeArgs is a Gradle plugin that allows you to enter information about the arguments you want to pass in the navigation graph. Then it generates code for you to deal with all the tedious bits of bundles, putting the information in, taking the information out on the other side. Not only that, but it also provides type safety because it knows what types of information to provide, to put into the bundle and to take out of the bundle. So we recommend using SafeArgs when you are passing arguments with a navigation component. So to demonstrate this, we're going to take another look at the application we've been looking at in previous episodes, the Donut Tracker. So here's our donut tracking app. It shows a list of donuts, each of which has a name, an optional description, and rating information that I added in a form in a dialog. So we can add another donut. We click on the fab, we add this information there, we add a description, we add a rating, and then it adds that to the list. But ideally, we would also be able to edit information about these items. So let's say I wanted to change the description for new donut, so I should be able to click on that, and that doesn't work because I haven't plugged in that code yet. So what do we need to be able to do that? So we need to pass information to the dialog that gives it enough information to populate its UI with that and then allow it to then update the database with the new information. Right, so I would like to do that by passing information. In particular, I would like to pass the underlying ID of this donut into the dialog. That means that I'm going to pass a value that represents that ID, this long value that represents the ID of the donut, and I'm going to pass it from the list fragment into the dialog fragment. For doing that, I'm going to use SafeArgs. First of all, I need some library dependencies. SafeArgs is not quite the same kind of library module as other parts of navigation. It's not an API per se, but rather a Gradle plugin that will generate code. So we need to pull it in as a Gradle dependency and then apply the plugin to run at build time. Let's start by opening up the project build.gradle file and adding in the dependency. So I'm going to use Kotlin version 2.2.0, you may be using a later version at that time. It should be similar. The main thing is to use the same version of the navigation component that you are using elsewhere in your project. Now open up your app or module build.gradle file and type this. You're going to apply the plugin, which means it's going to run at build time and generate that code for you. So at this point, the ID is probably complaining that it wants you to sync, and go ahead and do that now. So now that we're all set up to use safe args, let's go ahead and create an argument. Let's go over to the navigation graph, and we're going to add the argument to the destination that is going to receive that argument. So we'll click on the dialog fragment here. We see the section over on the right that says arguments. Let's add one there. Let's call it item ID and it asks for a type. The type that we use in the database is a long, so that is probably the type that we should use here. Note as we do this that the nullable item on this dialog is grayed out. That's because the base types allowed, integer, boolean, float, and long, are backed by primitive types, which are not nullable. So even though Kotlin's int type is nullable, the underlying primitive type being used here is not, so we're constrained to non-nullable types here. Note that we're now using our dialog destination both for entering a new item, which we've done before, and for editing an existing item. So we won't always have an item to pass to it. When we're creating a new item, we need to indicate that there is no existing item to display in that dialog, and it's going to be accepting new information. So we're going to pass a negative one to indicate that, since negative one is not a valid index for the item IDs. So let's use negative one as the default value 
here. When we navigate to the destination with no value, the system will supply that negative one automatically, and we can use that to decide whether to display an existing item or not. Now that we've set up our destination with an argument, let's generate the files that make it easier. This will create the code that you can then call to do what you want. If you haven't run the build yet, the files won't be generated, and Studio won't yet know about these functions that you want to call. So to make this a little bit easier, let's go ahead and run a build. So once the project is built, we can check out the results from the generated code. So we can navigate to the generated files in the project list. Where it says generated. So looking in donut list directions, you can see the companion object, which is the API that we're going to use to navigate to this dialog. Instead of navigating using an action, which is what the current code does, we're going to navigate using this nav directions object, which encapsulates both the action, which we originally had, that takes us to the dialog destination, and the argument that we are passing. Note that the function takes a long, which is the argument we created, and supplies it with the default value of negative 1, which is what we entered into that dialog. So if we create this without an argument, it'll create a nav directions object with an item ID of negative 1. Clicking on the other generated file, donut entry dialog fragment args, we can see that the code was generated for retrieving the argument on the other side of this process once we're in our destination. Now let's actually use these generated classes to pass and retrieve our argument. First, let's create the code in our dialog fragment to get the item ID argument and to populate the dialog fields accordingly. So let's navigate over to our dialog fragment. And here, I have some code that is handily commented out that does exactly that. So that first line of code uses a property delegate Kotlin feature supplied by the navigation library, which makes retrieving the argument from a bundle easier. It allows us to refer directly to the name of the argument inside of that variable args that we've declared. Then we're setting this variable called editing state to these two enum values based on whether we have actually supplied an argument here. So if it turns out the item ID is greater than 0, that means that we supplied a value and it came in as the argument in that bundle. If not, then it's going to be that negative 1 that we supplied as a default argument, which means that we're not editing a donut. Instead, we are creating a new donut. Now in this next code, which I will quickly uncomment. We know that we're editing a donut, which means that we're going to go ahead and get from the database the information for the donut whose item ID we supplied. And that is going to provide us the information that we're going to populate the form in the dialog with. And now we're going to add the information about what happens when the user clicks done. So when they click done, we want to either add or update the information in the database add if it's a new donut, or update if we're editing a donut. So when the user clicks on the Done button here, we come into this code, and we say Add Data. So we are calling on the view model this function called Add Data that says, first of all, is it a valid donut ID? Basically, did we populate the ID in that uh, donut variable with information that we got because of that argument? Are we editing that donut? Or is it a new donut? And that is going to determine in the view model whether it is adding or updating information in the database. And then we populate that with information from the UI in the dialog fragment. So now the app is able to process the new argument and to do the right thing with it, but we still need to send the argument through the system. And we do that by the code where we actually call the navigation operation to go to the dialog destination. So now we want to take a look at the code for the fragment that we're navigating from, which is for the donut list. So there's two ways that we get to that dialog fragment. We navigate when they click on the fab, and we navigate when they click on one of the items in the list. When they navigate from the fab, we use this navigate call where we navigate using an action. But if you look at the possibilities for navigate, there are all kinds of ways to call a navigation operation here. And we're going to use a different one. So the code that was auto-generated for us created a nav directions object, and we're going to use that. So donut list directions dot, 
And then you can see it automatically supplies us with what we want there. So uh, this does not have an argument, which means from what we were saying before, it is automatically going to supply an ID of negative one. All right, so when they click on the fab, it's going to say, yep, you're creating a new donut. We're going to pass in negative one. Now, if we go up here and say, OK, well, this is what happens when they are editing one of the donuts. So they're going to click on a donut here. And once again, we're going to navigate not using an action, but using a nav directions, donut list directions dot. And we're going to use that same one. But here, we are going to pass the ID of the donut that they clicked on. So that should be it. Now let's run this and see what happens. So there's our lovely donut app again. If we click on the fab, we correctly navigate to the dialog with no donut ID, which means that we're going to enter a new one. But if we click on one of the existing ones, populates it with the existing information, we can change that information, and it will enter that new information into the database, and we're done. So that's it for this episode of Navigation. Today, we learned about safe args and how to encapsulate your data by using safe args to pass information very easily between different destinations in your navigation graph.